Hi everyone, so the GYA ROM was finally released but unfortunately as I said it's not really that special it doesn't have much of the features which you would expect to have but still it has a nice team and it has some useful things added to it it's not filled with crap such as ERT tweaks and so on but it has the useful Lidroid toggles and everything else so in this video I'm going to show you how to install it once you download the zip file and then we're gonna have a quick tour into the ROM so let's begin so we start off by powering off the phone so just turn it off once the phone completely powers off hold the home button the power and the volume up at the same time you should be in recovery mode if you are on stock recovery you would need to download the CWM zip file and boot into it I'm currently on stock so choose apply letter from SD card and choose the CWM zip file here it is and now we are in Google mode recovery so from here first of all choose wipe data then choose yes to confirm now select wipe cache choose yes once again to confirm that now just head into mounts and storage and just make sure that most of the things are mounted here especially system just to be on the safe side go back and finally choose install zip from SD card then choose zip from SD card now locate the GYA ROM experimental zip file here it is select that then select yes to install it now just wait for the installation to be complete this should take about 10 seconds or at least a little more and once it says install from SD card complete press the back button and choose reboot system now as usual the first boot takes a while so just be patient do not panic and also I would like to mention that the boot animation has been damaged so yeah you might just hear the boot sound but you might not see the boot animation I have actually just disabled it from the build profile because it got damaged like I said it wouldn't work correctly so I just disabled it if you want to mess around with it find the following line in build prop and remove it you then see what I'm talking about and you can just try to fix it for yourself as obviously I don't have time these days so after the sound you get a black screen for a few seconds and then you are on the home screen and here we are on the setup screen now as you can see the default language here is German so you can just change it from the languages button here on the right side choose your language I'm just gonna choose English tap on the little android guy so you should be familiar with these steps I'm just gonna skip the setups here next so this is the home screen which you may see um, as you can see now here the widgets here are overlapping with the dock icons but you can just drag them around up this is something quite easy actually to fix but I didn't have time to modify the touch with launcher so yeah it's easily fixable like I said you can just put them up or you can just remove them there we go they are fixed um, so yeah you got the default wallpaper we get with the Samsung TouchWiz if you wonder what wallpapers this room has it doesn't really have any wallpapers just two wallpapers which I added to my taste uh, they were ripped off from other phones I believe from the Galaxy A2 this is the leaf wallpaper and the beach wallpaper I actually prefer to use this on the TouchWiz launcher there we go as you can see looking good now as for the notification screen it's pretty basic this is what you get there is no brightness slider here or anything of the sort you just have the black background here with the gray lines and you've got the Lidroid toggles uh, themed in the touch with look as you can see and all of them are working except the flashlight like I said not much work was put into this ROM this was for personal use so it has problems and uh, well the app drawer if you wonder these are the basic apps which you have I have left some as well as removed some so yeah not much apps have been themed actually none of them were actually themed so the music player is still the same the camera is still the same and everything else I have just modified the settings to my taste I have organized the settings as you can see each setting has its own is it is in its own category now if you go down you see power saving this sometimes works sometimes it doesn't like I said problems 
Then scroll down to the bottom, you can see the GYA settings which has Lidroid parts, V4A settings which is for the audio and CPU settings. For the audio, I am using Viper for Android. As you can see it is working, you can open up the equalizer and everything else. And about phone, pretty much the same, except that the name has been changed obviously. So yeah, it's got BusyBox and all of that, some um, performance tweaks added to it, and also the touches for lookalike launcher. Now as you can see, it has the labels here down to the icons, and also, this is not a 5 icon dock, but you can replace the icons if you wish. For example, if you do not like the phone, you can just move it somewhere like this and as you can see you only have three icons and now for example you can put the browser icon here and as you can see it is working just fine it also gets the label here as you can see and obviously it has the lidroid parts for the walk screen so yeah you have all the walk screen choices here which you want to use I always prefer the Samsung stock one with the leaf wallpaper but this is the default wallpaper, you can just change it. I have added the leave wallpaper as you can see in there. The power menu was not given much things. As you can see, it's just a basic power menu with silent mode, flight mode and the power off. There is also no extended boot menu as you can see, a power menu, sorry. So you just have a shutdown option and you shut down. Now as you can see also, the uh, backgrounds, the context menus and everything else have been changed. You can see how the colors and the whole theme of this is kind of different. You can see how from the top here and some icons I have changed to my own taste from uh, more advanced touch with phones. For example, the browser icon, the camera icon, the uh, dialer as you can see, the touch with home here, the settings, my files, yeah and so on. So I honestly don't know what else to show you. I believe that's pretty much it. This is, like I said, this was just a personal ROM. I never really plan to release this to the public, but still, if you want to see this actually be developed and you want to see more features added to it, and if you want to help, obviously, please leave a comment or email me at the email address given in the blog post. So yeah, that's all everyone, thank you for watching once again, and I'll see you next time, goodbye.